So hello and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial. And in the last tutorial we set up our float rec class. So now we're prepared um to actually handle collision. So let us go to our tile class, okay? Uh so this is how uh collision is going to work for us. So it's relatively simple, it's really 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 simple. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to we're gonna go to our player class right now and we're going to just create a property and we're gonna make this float rec property and we'll just call this rect and we'll say get return new float rect and in here we're gonna pass in the player's position dot x position dot y uh the move animation dot frame width and the move animation dot frame height okay and uh that should be uh good for us okay so we got that there and for this class what we're gonna do is we'll just create a float rect on this block float rect and uh, we'll just call this rect and it's gonna be equal to new float rect position dot x position dot y and uh, we we don't have the layer dimension so for now we're just gonna put 32 by 32 we will change this later if I don't remember to then remind me but uh, we're gonna need to change it just in case our tiles aren't 32 by 32 so you won't have to or actually you know what instead of doing that like, like let's just do that now um, so let's just go to our our layers uh, to our layer class and um, what we will do is that we'll say uh, public vector 2 tile dimensions and for now uh, we'll just return our new vector 2 Oh, it should be get return new vector two <coughs> 32 by 32 so if we change this and it should modify everything okay uh, so we will we'll say layer oh we don't even have an instance of it in here so you know what uh, we should make this static uh, if we make it static, then yeah, we'll be able to access it anywhere we need to. We can we can always change it later. You know what I mean? So we'll just say layer dot tile dimensions dot x layer dot tile dimensions dot y. Okay. So we got that set up. So now we're going to uh, have to do a, a check. Okay. So this is gonna be relatively easy. So we're just gonna say if player dot o, sorry. So we need to actually put in player in our parameters right here. We're gonna need a player instance. So we're gonna say player dot rect dot intersects with our rect. And the state of our tile is equal to state dot solid then we know that we've collided with a solid object okay now if we've collided with a solid object then there's some things that we want to do right now we want to find out the previous position so what we got to do for this tile class as well we're gonna add a new uh, variable called previous position and what this is gonna do is at the top of our code we're gonna say previous position up here previous position is equal to our position <coughs> sorry uh this should be p for previous and we have to do the same thing in our player.cs so let's do that before we forget so at the top of player.cs we just say previous position is equal to position okay and uh, while we're at it while we're here we're gonna have to make um we're gonna have to make a reference to it or i mean um a property for it so do we have it in here so yeah we'll make the property in the entity class 
So we'll just say public <coughs> vector two, our previous position, and we'll say get return the previous position. Okay. So let's go back to our tile class. We have our previous position in here. <coughs> and so we got that set up. So now we're going to make two rectangles. So if there's a collision, there <coughs> we're going to make two rectangles. So we're going to say um, previous player for the previous player's position. So we'll say player dot previous position dot x player dot previous position dot y. And then we have to find the width and height. So let's go back to our player class or let's go to the entity class actually. We'll make a public animation animation call, called animation and we'll say get return our move animation. Okay, let's go back to tile.cs. So now we're gonna say player dot animation dot and I hate when this happens I'm gonna have to close this and open back the file because intelli intelligence stops working after a while I don't know why but player dot animation dot frame width player dot animation dot frame height okay and we're going to do the same thing here for the previous tile. So we're going to put previous position dot x, previous position dot y. And for the width, we'll put layer dot tile dimensions dot x. And then we'll put layer dot tile dimensions dot y. Okay. So now that we got that set up, so we we check if there's a collision. If there's a collision, then we need to um we need to have these there. So now this is how we're gonna check. So we're gonna check um for all four different collision types, and this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna check for the top first, right? That's the top priority. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna say that if play um yeah if player dot wrecked dot bottom is greater than or greater than or equal to rect dot top and previous player dot bottom is less than or equal to previous tile dot top then there is a bottom collision so what it's saying is that if we have collided right uh, we have to check if we're collided. So this is going to check if the bottom is greater than the top to check if we actually had a collision. If it is, then we have to check if the previous position, if the previous position was greater than the top of the other one, then we know it's a top collision, right? Because it was greater than it before and then now it's not. So it came from the top and then collided. So that's what we're going to do. So if that happens, we're going to do something. So we're going to do this for all scenarios. So Else, if player dot rect dot top is less than or equal to rect dot bottom, and previous player dot top is greater than or equal to previous tile dot bottom, then we do something. Else, if uh we sh we don't need to do anything. We don't need to do um else for left and right because uh, we only need to call one thing for that and what we're gonna do is we're just going to go to the enemy class I mean the entity class sorry uh, for our velocity we're just gonna make a property for that vector to velocity and we're just gonna get a make it a get property and uh, yeah that's what we're gonna do so <coughs> sorry so if there if it's not a top or bottom collision then we're just gonna say position player player dot position oh we don't even have anything for that as well so we got to go to the entity class 
make it so we can get and set the position. Return position set position equals to value and in the tile class we'll say play dot position is equal to not equal minus equals player dot velocity and uh, I'm gonna end this tutorial here so we're gonna continue off finishing the collision in the next tutorial or maybe the next two tutorials. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And that's it for now. So bye.